because no fight stick is truly personal without some personalized art. I'm here to show you how to install and cut some artwork to fit your fight stick. First thing you're gonna need is a plexiglass for your fight stick. This is a protective covering that protects your art from getting scratched or smudged in your daily activities. You're gonna need a couple copies of your artwork. I would do at least two or three copies. Assume that you are going to mess up because it is much easier to just pay for a couple copies of your art, mess it up, and then move on to another one than it is to go all the way back to the print shop. You're also gonna need clean cloth, some scissors, an X-Acto knife, some sort of marker, not a permanent one, and a cutting board. Please, for the love of God, please get a cutting board. Do not destroy your tables trying to make your fight stick look clean. All right, so to start with, we're going to clean up our plexiglass. And when you are satisfied with that, take it and set that aside for later. Then we're gonna take our art. Now, for me, I have a little bit of white space over here that I'm going to trim out, which will probably be fine to leave, but I'm just gonna do it just to clean it off. When you create your fight stick art, always leave some extra space around the edges of your artwork and assume that it's going to be cut off. You want to print a little bigger than the area that you want displayed. That way, when you go right up to the edge of your artwork, you won't have any white space if it's too small, too large, etc, etc. I'm gonna just toss that away. All right, the next thing that we wanna do is take that plexiglass and mark the areas for its holes. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna flip this over, flip the plexiglass over as well, line it up. Now be careful to line it up how you want it before you mark them. So, for me, it's going to be more important that I get this left side of the border onto the art than it's really going to be that I get the rest of this over here. So I'm going to line that up. I'm going to choose to line that up over there. Right here. That down, make sure it's lined up as neatly as you can before you do any cutting. And I'll leave a little border, just like I said before, around it. It's intended that to get cut. So line that up as well as you can. Just pay, pay special attention to making sure that it is straight. If you have a hole puncher, I like to punch these out with a hole puncher. Oh, and there you go, you can see why we do the outside first. Take your time with this. This is going to be one of the most crucial parts. You don't want to mess this part up because it will mess up the alignment of everything else if you do it incorrectly. If you're using a little marker, you might want to give it a little second to dry. Just so it doesn't smudge all over the place while you do it. You also want to 
clean up your button holes and the outside. And marker residue, just in case it smudges during installation. First thing I want to do is take my scissors and I'm just going to cut around the trace edge. Alright, now we're going to take our X-Acto blade and we're just going to cut into here. We want to cut actually a little bit larger than the size of the hole that you created. And it, remember, it doesn't have to be a very nice hole. The way these buttons sit is the holes are actually built for the plunger and the part inside. The rim of the actual button is going to be a little bit larger and it's going to cover up any imperfections. So don't worry too much about making it completely circular or anything like that, just do your best. And cut a little bit larger because you don't want there to be extra art or extra paper in the buttonhole when you push it down because that will tear and possibly cut the artwork over there. See there, it slipped a little bit, but that's part of the reason that we do it on the back side. Because if you look here, you can see it, but not too well. So, cutting through the back, I'm kind of hide those knife marks. A good thing to keep in mind when you're printing this as well is that you want to use something that's a little thicker. Please don't just use regular printer paper to print out your artwork, even if it's big enough. You want to go for something like cardstock. Like you don't need to go as fancy as anything like photo paper since the plexi is reflective itself and it will hide most of that gloss finish as well. It's not going to be something that you touch yourself, so, ideally. So this is, what you, this is what we got so far. Another cool, a good thing to do is put your layout on top of your artwork to generally have an idea of where the bottom holes are going to be. So you see what parts of the art are less important. All right, so with that done, safely put away your knife for now. We need to solve this plexi. Flip it over, give it a little more look around and if you're satisfied we we'll install this simply put your plexi on top line it up and then we're going to line this up top of our arcade stamp case so let me set this aside here drop this here oh my actuator for my joystick fell up Gonna line this up here. Pay special attention to the edges if you line this up. And you can use the screw holes as a guide for where you want to be centering your artwork. It's not need to be perfect again, especially if you did it correctly and added a little space for bleed. 
And as you install the screws, that should help you line up your Shoutouts to the artists who did this art. I just collaged it together. It's actually a combination of two different illustrations. You can kind of see that the rocket metal Sonic over here from Sonic the Fighters is of a different style. Um, honestly, it was really the only complete composite of the different metal Sonics that I could really find. But it still did not have Rocket Metal Sonic, so I just added that in there. I'll have the links to the original artwork and the artists in the description if you're interested in that. Because I do not want to use their names. Alright, and now it's time to install the buttons. I'm just going to go ahead and pop those in. And if you've cut the holes large enough, you can see that there's a little bit of the metal rim here that's visible. But these are all sliding in pretty cleanly without any tears. With that done, you can give them a little, another little wipe down. Ooh. Hey, buddy. My little plant over there. And some sweet tricks. Come on, give this another little wipe down. See how it shines? Looking very nice. And then you can install that joystick. So, this isn't quite finished. I still gotta fix up the back, but this is kind of what it's gonna look like. And I think the result is pretty clean myself. Alright, if you enjoyed this, you know what to do. If you didn't enjoy this, you know what to do, and I'll catch you on the next one.